Good morning and welcome to the Lake District. If you're new around here, hi, I'm Caroline and I'm joined today by my partner in crime, Andy, my brother, Graham, and he's brought along his adorable dog, Sam. Yesterday, I ended up walking up to Orest Head and it was listed as the third best hike in the Lake District according to the All Trails app, which got me wondering, what was the number one trail? And it turns out that it's a circular around Luff Rig. So we've come along this morning to Luffrig because quite frankly, I'm curious to know, is it worth the hype? Does it really deserve that number one spot? We will go on up, it's 12 kilometers around and up to the top and back down. The trail's suggesting that it's gonna take just over four hours. This area of the Lake District is described as being great for hiking, bird watching and camping. Not really one into my wild camping because in part the rules around it seem very hazy. But we have just gone and seen a gigantic heron sat on a fence and that's what like three, four minutes into this walk. So let's see how many other birds we can see on this hike. A few minutes ago, we just passed this gorgeous horse box that's been converted into a hot drinks and snack box. And I think that had we just parked a little bit further along on this route, it would have been great if we come across that in like the last 10, 15 minutes of the walk. started to climb elevation and I think we'd all just assume that this was a hiker's footpath and um, we passed one of those salt gritting boxes we were like why would you need to grit this and then we've just come across this really gorgeous house but we we're saying oh you wouldn't be able to get a car up this so we don't think that it's a holiday rental we think that either it's someone's permanent home or perhaps it's someone who's rich enough to have a second home who feels like when they're not staying there they don't have to rent it out to anyone else I thought that it was just gonna wrap around Luffrig before we then go up to the ridge for the views out the top. But actually it's popped us up, not properly up at the summit. I can still see that off in the distance there. And there have been a few footpaths that have gone off. So we could go on a more direct route. Yesterday I'd wondered if the All Trails app was making us just go walking for the sake of walking. And it turned out that actually the walk that it put us on was gorgeous and I was really pleased that we didn't shorten the hike so I'm saying in the All Trails app we trust and I am going to stick to it and we're going to go back down and I think we're going to get pushed around to Luffrig Tarn. We have now crossed through a gate into a farmer's field that is full of lots and lots of sheep. So Sam has now had to go onto the lead, which is fine. He's still very happy to be out in the outdoors, just sniffing away. And then the other thing was with regards to the camping. So I'd read up that it's a really popular place for camping and I was like, oh, but you know, it's a very gray area, wild camping in England. But I think why it's popular for camping is that there is quite a beautiful looking campsite that's sat in amongst the fowls with farmer's sheep all around the perimeter of it. So I can imagine this is actually a beautiful place to come and camp. In the All Trails app, we most definitely trust Wowzers. We've walked just a tiny bit further along from that campsite and it's just opened out into this gorgeous view over what I'm assuming is Lafrig Tarn. We're in this farmer's field that is just filled full of sheep and they just don't care. They're just sat there munching away on the grass. It almost feels like I'm in a bit of a Disney film. This is picture perfect. There's a few gates allowing us access actually down to the tarn and it is gorgeous. We've got a couple of white swans just swimming around in there, quite a few water lilies and there's ducks and quite a few people have also come down here to go for a wild swim. And as Graham was just pointing out, this is probably the best time of year to go for a wild swim because it's right at the end of August and the water's probably not gonna get any warmer than this. I think this is quite a nice spot though for a bit of a and 
got gorgeous views out on, onto the peaks. Unfortunately, unlike yesterday, where it had that map saying, these are all of the peaks that you're looking out on, and it named all of them. I have no idea, because there's nothing like that here, but it's gorgeous all the same. For a little bit of context, Sam loves paddling in the water, but as soon as he feels like he's going to need to actually swim because it gets too deep, he is petrified to go any further. Graham's been a little bit mean and throwing the stick just a little bit too far out into the water and he does not want to go and get it. Well, this is a bit of a new one as we've just left the tarn a lady said to me great so now the whole world's gonna know all about the frig tarn which i was a bit like oh uh it's okay like i've only got 2,000 subscribers on my channel you know i'm not like a huge channel and she said yes but that's going to be 2,000 people now coming here <laughs> at which i tried to reassure her and was like hey like a lot of you guys you know you're from like north america or the middle east i'm sure you're not all going to suddenly flock here but she really didn't seem overly happy but the other thing that i was thinking is this is the number one rated walk on all trails so i really didn't think it was too much of a secret Sam, up there And then in the All Trails app, we don't so much trust. The next stretch is going to be a longer road. In fairness, I think it's probably going to be a very quiet country road, but just obviously with Sam, we would have to put him on the lead. And we noticed that there just seems to be a plethora of hiking trails or like zigzagging and crisscrossing up to the top of Lethrig. So the All Trails app is saying walk along a road, then you go up to the top. And once you're up at the top, you just go back the same way down as what you came up which to me just seems a little bit crazy. So instead we are going to do a different path up to the top. And then when we get up to the top, we're then gonna join onto the path that we were supposed to have been on to get back down off of it. So I'm cheating just a little bit. <laughs> We've been looking out onto all of the peaks that have now been added to the horizon because of the height that we've gained. And we've had quite the debate over whether we think that one of them is the Old Man of Coniston or Coniston Old Man. What is the actual name for that? It, do, do, do both suffice? I was so convinced that it was the closest one to us because of just the way in which you've got almost like a volcanic crater, but it's dipped down on one side and then like the lower side is the one that people hike down. And I know that it plateaus there because you've got a bit of a Tarn Lake but we've just gone on our phones to have a quick look and it turns out that that one is weather weather something and then the one that's hidden just behind it that one's old man of Coniston oh, <laughs> and glasses <laughs> Normally we try and stop for lunch at the trig point if it is around abouts lunch time because usually it offers very pleasant views. However, <laughs> that trig point was riddled with flying ants. And this is the third time in recent years that I've been up to the Lake District in this last week of my six week summer holidays. Last year when I went up onto Helm Crag and it was quite a hot day, a little bit like this, and there was barely any wind. Loads of flying ants right at the top on the rocks. And then I remember when I did the Coniston Old Man, the same boiling hot day. And again, it's so many flying ants right up there on the top. There are quite some epic clouds over there as well, which is making me worry a little bit, but I'm hoping that lack of breeze is gonna stop them from pushing over because they are definitely rain clouds and I really, really don't wanna get rained on today. 
as always, whenever possible, we will try and stop and have lunch with a spectacular view. And I actually think that the view from there is one heck of a lot better than up on the peak. So even if there aren't all of these flying ants, which there aren't any over there, I wouldn't recommend having it up at the peak. Just come down a little bit. Gorgeous view. We finished up having had lunch, it was quite a lazy one today and those rain clouds really have come over but thankfully they're holding off, not actually raining. The descent down is pretty bad on the, on the footpath, like really loose rocks but it looks like the helicopters come and dropped a whole load of bags so I'm assuming that it's imminent when this trail is going to get a bit of an upgrade but I think just slowly and steadily seems to be the key to get off of this safely. We're once again deviating ever so slightly from the All Trails app. It's only about two o'clock in the afternoon and we've seen that there is a path that kind of zigzags down to Grasmere and it looks like there's kind of a cool beach where we've looked down and we can see people wild swimming and stand up paddle boarding and we're just being led through this sort of fern covered terrace path to get down to it. As we were making our way down to the lake, Graham first of all spotted it, pointed it out to Andy, who then pointed it out to me, and there was a heron sat on a rock, obviously keeping an eye out for fish. Then there was another heron that was probably darting around under the water, which I've never seen before. So instead of going to the lake first, we've actually made a bit of a detour down to the stream. And when we first arrived, the heron was being super clumsy. It almost fell over at one point, but obviously because it was able to flap its wings, it kept itself upright. And then just after a few minutes, it then decided to fly off a little bit further down the stream and I think scared a duck in the process but it's been a pretty cool wildlife sighting. Unfortunately by the time we got down here though the one that was swimming around under the river was long gone. The last stretch is along Rydal Water. Pretty much as soon as we drop down to lake level back at Grasmere, the hordes of people that are around is crazy. The lakes do look really nice, so loads of people are out doing things like paddle boarding and swimming. And there's this one guy who's gone past paddle boarding with his dog on the paddle board, which looks like an awful lot of fun. People seem to be out as well, like doing walking like ourselves, and also mountain biking seems to be quite popular too. And we've made it back to the start of the trail pretty soon after that ride or water. We have got one incredibly tired dog that has just gone and lay down in his dog bed in the camper van. I think what we're now going to do is we're going to be driving back towards Keswick. I always get Keswick and Kendall mixed up. And we're going to go and try and find a pub so that we can have a pub dinner. But of course it is the bank holiday weekend and the Sunday of it. So we're just going to have to see if anywhere has got any availability at this point.